Australia. Good morning to those of you who are joining us on Facebook as well, and to those who are joining in, in your own homes, wherever you are. Um, can I just remind you a little later on in the service, we're going to um, have a, a, an agapo, which is simply where we break bread or cake or biscuits or something, um, and also have a, a short drink together, and that can be wine or tea or coffee or whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, traditionally, it would be uh, a wine or, or water or something like that. So that's good. If you want, to, if you haven't got that ready already, then when we're singing the first hymn, you might want to go and get something to do that. It's a bit like you know, after going when we, we have meals where we share stuff together, like um, afternoon tea or mid morning coffee and biscuits or something like that. It's that sort of idea. So welcome. Um, Harry's going to lead us through the first part of our service, um, and then a little later on, there will be a chance we're going to pray for the people who are going to continue ministry after I've gone. Um, and also to pray for us as we go um, and then chance to just break bread mm. together and, and drink together as well mm. so the best thing probably is apart from when we're doing the response bits if you could mute yourself um, not because we don't love hearing you sing um, but the timing goes all over the place on zoom and we end up with a, um, some very interesting um, variations on rounds or half rounds or quarter rounds or something like that so feel free to to sort of just join in on the bits which are on screen. We're going to share the screen now, um, which I'm just about to do. I'll get there. That's that one. Um, Harry, over to you. Well, good morning, everyone, to this morning this service which is perhaps a preach with uh, approach with some mixed emotions we're we're sad to see david and judith leaving us but on the other hand they're going to new exciting things i think they might be should have really considered carefully the fact that they're crossing the humber that can be a very dangerous thing to do around here but, but uh, and we remember what the vikings did to to us all those years ago in Bardney, but then we are. No, we're going to wish them a, a safe and lovely journey to their new place and hope they'll be very, very happy here. Um, so we'll be singing, uh, singing uh, to ourselves at home and we'll be sharing uh, bread or whatever, as David said, cake or whatever it is later on in the service to, to bid them farewell. So we sing our first oh, God, gathering prayer. We say together, loving God, God, we gather in the name of Jesus to learn how to follow more closely in his footsteps and to give authority to our words by backing them with truthful actions. Amen. And so we come to our first hymn, crown him with many crowns. Oh. 
So we now come to our notices. Um, will there be Holy Communion this week? Yes, there will be. Um, so this week it will be, um, Sue will be taking communion on Wednesday in church, um, assisted by Corinna, but you'll be able to join it both on Zoom and on Facebook. Um, and the plan is for Wednesday communions, they'll continue mostly fortnightly or so um, as, as through the coming weeks until we're allowed back into the building. And then next Sunday we'll be back in church, oh, sorry, back on Zoom and Facebook at 10 o'clock. Um, yeah. I won't be, but everybody else will be. Um, but I'll probably actually be around anyway, so I might even join you, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're celebrating Candlemas on Wednesday. Lovely. Oh, of course, yes, that's <laughs> yes, nice. Candlemas this and, and, also, and we're looking for a volunteer to help uh, clean up uh, St Lawrence uh, one evening in the week. Is it a particular night, David? It, at the moment, it's Saturday, Sunday and Monday are the three nights we're looking for people for. All oh, right, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. And the um, idea is they simply come in and clean down where people have been coming in for private prayer, just spray it and clean some chairs. It takes about 10 minutes. It's my favourite week, isn't it? It doesn't take very long and... And, and if we're looking for volunteers and Jane, Jane can certainly give training anyway. Uh, we're being invited by the archbishops, uh, if anyone heard the Sunday program this morning, uh, to join in a prayer for the whole country, the nation, every day at six o'clock through February. Um, so uh, I'm sure you'll find things about that in the press and so on. But if you need any more information, please uh, get in touch with me. And we will be sorting out some details of Lent courses. All sorts of people are offering Lent courses and we've got to uh, decide or offer people a choice to decide what they would like to do. So as we know, David and Judith will be leaving us. They're having a short break stroke holiday this this coming week and then they'll be clearing up and packing they've got half as much rubbish as we have there'll be a petrol bonfire in the garden they're actually planning to move on the 24th stroke 25th of february uh, um, moving in that afternoon and the following day and as i said at the beginning we do wish them well in their new home I think, have you got a new kitchen there yet, David? No. Oh, we've got a <laughs> now there's a leak in the, in, from the water, water, water pipes up in the loft, so they're now having to dry out bits of the house as well. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> How long has the house been empty? About three years. Oh. You're very brave, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and then David's licensing will take place on Zoom and Facebook on the 11th of March at seven o'clock. And we will be given links and, and details of that as to how we can, we can follow that on Zoom or Facebook. So we come to our prayer of approach. We take a few minutes of quiet to calm ourselves from the worries and the anxiety of the world. And remember that God is always with us, past, in the present, and out there already in the future. And together, we pause in the busyness of life to see your face, to hear your voice, to pay attention to ourselves, to each other, and to you, that we might be equipped by your spirit for all that is to come. Amen. And we continue by making a declaration of our faith. We believe and trust in God, the Father Almighty. We believe and trust in Jesus Christ, his Son. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit. We believe and trust in the three in one. And so we come to our reading from Ephesians. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So we come to our next hymn, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done. Oh, 
David will give us his his final reflection before he set he and Judith set off on their journey. Over to you, David. Thank you, Harry. The reading which Judith read for us from chapter four of Ephesians um, talks about the fact that there is one body, one spirit, one Lord, one hope, one faith, one baptism. And it seems to me that the the, the lovely thing about what happens in Bardney and the villages around is that there is that connection of unity between the different churches, the different people of God across the spectrum from whatever the background is, whatever the, the place they've come from, that we recognise that we are called together to be the people of God. And there is therefore that beautiful thing that happens that people just get on with being Christians together rather than worrying about labels. The trouble with labels is that they're both useful to help us to define and describe something, but also they can become um, prisons, if you like, within which that's the only way that you can work is within your label. Um, and I sometimes wish we could get rid of denominational names and things like that, but obviously the structure doesn't like that. But nevertheless, we need to hold on to, as we look forward, to what it is that makes the churches in Bardney special. And it seems to me that it is that unity, which is the thing we have to hold on to, to recognise and build up together as the people of God, just simply that we have a common calling, that our, our unity is not based around anything other than we share in one baptism. The grounds of our unity is that we start at the same place. Everybody has come to know Jesus's love through baptism. We come to know the grace of God through baptism. We come to know the power of God through baptism. It's that baptism which sets us together and makes us family. Um, and it's interesting that that place within the family that we're called to is so that the family can then be built up. If you go towards the end of those words from chapter four, it says that the people of God, that the body of Christ may be built up. It doesn't say the church. It says the people of God, the body of Christ can be built up. And our calling is to be mutually building each other up, to be mutually using our gifts, our skills, our callings, to be building each other up into the fullness of the body of Christ. And the body becomes complete when each of us begins to function in the way that God intends us. And so those descriptions of different roles within the body of Christ are not meant to be labels which confine us, 
but things which help us just to see that these are some of the things that we need to be doing together as the people of God. That we need to build each other up. We need to look for the new things. We need people who will teach us and shepherd us and will be evangelists and will be pastors and prophets. We need those gifts and skills to build each other up. But actually, it's all the gifts and skills that we have, not just one or two labels. And in fact, my suspicion is that we all operate at some point within those five different labels. Um, and it's as we bring what we've got to the story that things grow and develop. I'm convinced, I'm certain, I know that um, God's got a plan and a purpose for his church in this place. Um, a place which will be, I think, a, a, a light, a beacon to what God's going to do in the future. Um, that there are foretastes of what God's plan is, will be in the coming weeks and months. And so my encouragement to you, in the midst of all the turmoil that will go on um, because of the pandemic, and perhaps within the, the slightly more, less disturbing but can be equally traumatic of the vicar leaving, um, and, and I come to that Brenda and Elwin leaving as well, because that's pretty traumatic, um, that there is that sense that, well, what's going to happen? Well, it seems to me that we don't know what's going to happen. But in the midst of all that stress and tension, we need to bear with one another. That's what the word says, that we bear with one another, making every effort to keep the unity of peace. Whatever you, peace, whatever you focus on, focus on keeping the unity of the spirit of peace together. Make that your high aim, to, to talk to each other. So yes, sometimes disagree with each other. Disagreement's not a problem. Um, but it's about how you disagree, recognising that we're family and we're building each other up. And so that we do that in ways that we are patient, we are humble, we are gentle with each other. I don't know about you, but the last year has been very tiring, emotionally, spiritually, physically. And the last thing, the easiest thing to do when you get like that and you get stressed is to, is to, to, to lash out at people. But we almost have to remind ourselves that we go back to Jesus, who then comforts us with his loving kindness and then equips us to then be those who continue to be able to give and care and share and bear with each other. So we make the effort to keep the unity of the spirit of peace. But all of that happens, um, and I want to take the Ephesians 3 after Ephesians 4 in one sense, that there is that lovely prayer at the end of chapter 3 of Ephesians, which is about Paul's prayer for the church in Ephesus. And it seems to me that the fulfilment of that prayer is how then we begin to work out what it is in chapter 4. And as we begin to work out chapter four, the prayer in chapter three is fulfilled. They're, they're, they're connected to each other. And the prayer is simply that we will grow together, knowing something about how high and wide and deep and broad is the love of God. And as we know that, then we're able to put everything else in perspective. And we're able to make that commitment to bear with one another, to be patient with one another, to be gentle and humble with each other, to build each other up so that the spirit of God, the unity of the ch his people, the, us, the church of Jesus might grow up to be complete. It won't be complete in this life, but it will be complete in the future. But in the meantime, that's what we work for. So Judith and I are gonna pray for you now. And we're gonna pray simply that prayer in Ephesians over you as the people of God in Bardney. So let's pray. And you might want to just hold out your hands as those who receive all that God has for you as we pray for you. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Jesus may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how high, wide, long and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
and we will be praying for you over the coming days and weeks and months and hopefully not too many years um, <laughs> as the process of, of working out what the future of the churches here might look like but it's good to remember that we pray for each other and we bear with one another as we do that. Harry. We now sing again, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pray for the ministry team as things continue. Um, and so we're going to just put some faces up on screen, um, which will hopefully begin to add some pictures into the picture. Uh, I'm just doing that. Uh, Gradually you should get some faces appearing on your screen. Um, lost one. I think that's everybody. Yes, it is. So these are the, the, the people who will continue in ministry over the coming days and weeks in terms of the, the, the public services of the church. The church wardens um, will also continue in their role um, and they'll be doing that. In fact, legally, they're the ones who are responsible for it. So those of you who are in the ministry team, you're a really good position because you're not legally responsible for what happens in the interregnum. It's the church wardens. <laughs> So you can do what you like and they have to get it. So we probably will pray for the church wardens in a moment as well, because I think they will need it probably more than the ministry team. I don't know. Um, but we're going to pray for these people as they continue in ministry. And I'm going to pray out loud. But you might like to just pray for them quietly as well in their life and all that they do. Father, thank you for each of these people. For Harry, for Tom and Sue. Claire and Anne and Corinna and Maggie. Thank you for their willingness to love and serve you and building up the people of God in this place. 
We pray that you would bless them with peace, that you'd remind them that you love to work with what we can bring, with what we have, not what we don't have. So give to them a confidence in your ability to work in them and through them. And then anoint them with your Holy Spirit. Equip them in speaking and doing your word. And pray that you would refresh them and renew them in this time. And that you'd show each of us how we can work with them and support them in their calling. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And then you can see Jane in the background. Um, Jeffrey's somewhere and, and is hiding. I can't see where Jeffrey is. Um, he was there a minute ago. Uh, gone. I have to flick through my screens. It's the trouble with these. There's Jeffrey. That's right. uh, Jane's hiding in the background, but she's going to have to come a bit forward now. Um, it's moving some. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any of the other church wardens are here at the moment, are they? Um, I can't see Jonathan or Gina. Um, so they're the church wardens in that. Um, there are those who take on the role of church wardens, although they're not called church wardens. Um, and I can't see, I saw David Olsop a bit earlier. Uh, he's hiding in the background, but I will just move him up as well. Um, I can't spotlight him because he's hid, hiding away. Um, but David Alsop also takes the role of, in many ways, of church. Oh, he is there, takes the role of church warden in um, minting as well. So we're going to pray for these people who carry the legal role of what's going to happen, um, and those who take the role of of caring for the villages as church wardens. Again, you might just want to pray for them quietly in your hearts. Father, thank you for each of these who take on roles and responsibilities to care for your church, to be officers of the kingdom of God. We pray for your anointing and blessing upon them. We pray that you'd bring around them good people to form teams. We pray that you'd give them the freedom to sometimes laugh as well as cope with the, the stresses of all the things they've got to do. And pray that you would just equip them for the things that will come in the coming weeks and months. But Father, that you would prosper them and bless them in this role. For we ask it again in Jesus' name. Amen. I think now the next stage is we are going to pray for Judith and me, I believe. Is that that's, right, that's right, David. Yeah, I'm glad you've got that. <laughs> right, I'm just fiddling with this again. Uh, and we've got, so Harry's going to pray for us. And I've also asked Pete Atkins and Kath Atkins, um, who are sort of representatives of the wider Christian community, if they will pray for us as well. Um, so I'm just going to put that one on as well and put on, I've lost Harry now. Harry's gone somewhere. <laughs> they suggest that you don't try and lead the service and uh, uh, run it at the same time but there's not an easy way of doing that at the moment so uh, i don't know which one of you wants to go first but uh, please do harry's going to go first yeah heavenly father we thank you for the ministry of david and judith in this parish and the wider church community and we ask your blessing upon them as they move forward into new things in a new place. Give them courage and constancy to face up to the challenges they face, not least a house that's not been lived in for three years. Um, we, we love them and we send them with your blessing to serve a new, new place, new people, new things, and give us the courage to look forward into the way things will be differently here. Father, bless them and keep them forevermore. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for your call of David and Judith to this place. Thank you so much for the time that uh, you've given us to, to have them as, our, as um, our leaders here. Thank you so much for that. Father, I pray um, 
that as they uh, finish their last um, days in the area, that they'll have a, an overwhelming sense of, as Harry said, of love and appreciation uh, for all that they've uh, been and done. And Father, I pray that as they look to move on as well, they'll feel that they've uh, they've done what you've asked, Father. Thank you so much for their courage and their steadfast serving of the people of all the parish in all the different communities here. Father, thank you for their hard work. Thank you for their love and their compassion. Thank you, Father, for the way they've thrown themselves into the life and um, business of your people here. Father, I pray as they move on that, that you'll go ahead of them. Thank you that we know you will. And Father, thank you that you've called them to this new place too. And I pray that uh, there'll be a warm welcome there. I pray they'll feel that they, that they are heading for the right place and they'll know soon that how much they will be welcomed and appreciated there. Thank you so much for the time you've given us with Judith and David. Amen. 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 Father, we pray for the WISC benefits. We pray for the communities of that part of the country in Yorkshire. We pray that your Holy Spirit will visit those communities and bring about life, bring about new life, bring about affirmation of the life that's already there. We pray, Father, that Judith and David will be able to accurately hear what you're doing, see what you're doing and cooperate with what's already happening there by your power. We pray, Father, that there'll be the transformation of those communities, that more and more people in those villages will come to know you. We pray for the three schools in the area. We pray that David's engagement with those will be really effective, that he'll bring life and he'll bring a sense of a purpose or as a connection with you, especially for the children and the families. We pray as he's asked to lead with the uh, engagement of the parish with young people that he'll be able to do that well. Father, overall, we want to hear in uh, years to come of how you have been doing wonderful things in that area. So we want to finish by you know, the prayer which I began, Father. Please visit those communities by the power of your Holy Spirit. And bring all to be centred on Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now Mary's going to lead us in our prayers. During this third lockdown as a country, we bring our prayers to our loving Heavenly Father. And there will be an opportunity for you to personalise each prayer I pray on our behalf when I pause. If you would like to, you can use the response to each prayer, either as a declaration of faith or of intent, no matter how you are feeling right now. So after each prayer, I will say, God of love, and let's respond. We believe and trust in you. God of love, we believe and trust in you. We pray for our community, especially for those who are bereaved at this time whether from the virus or not. We pray that they will know your comfort and have the opportunity to process their grief and begin to walk through the journey of grieving, knowing that you are there with them. We pray for the family and friends of Eileen Smithson, and we name before you those we know who have recently lost loved ones. We also pray for those who are sick, whether from COVID or not. We think of Dave and Val Letts in need of our prayers at this time, and others we know personally. God of love, we believe and trust in you. We pray for all those whose livelihoods are being directly affected by consequences of COVID, and for those who are struggling financially. We thank you for the generosity of so many in countries around the world who are making a difference in their local communities by serving and helping in practical ways. We name before you those we know who are being affected in this way.
and thank you for all those in our community who are helping in very practical ways to provide for the needs of those around them. Thank you that you say that we can ask for anything in your name, knowing that this also means provision for our physical needs, and we ask that you would indeed provide. God of love, we believe and trust in you. Yeah. We pray for those struggling with anxiety and depression and other mental health issues at this time. We pray for those struggling with relationship breakdown and family difficulties that may be exacerbated by the lockdown. We name before you those known to us who are on our hearts. Thank you that you are the only one who can work all things together for good for those who love you, and that you can indeed bring healing and hope into situations that feel hopeless to us. God of love, we believe Indeed. and trust in you. We thank you for those key workers who are working in whatever capacity across our country to keep our communities functioning. Pray for parents trying to juggle work and homeschooling. Pray for those in our own community working so hard to serve us, and especially for the staff in our village school. We pray for those working in frontline healthcare that you would sustain and strengthen them. We name now those that we know. We thank you for the rollout of the vaccination programme and the hope that it brings for helping to bring the virus under control. We pray for our own government who have to make difficult decisions on our behalf on many issues. God, give them the ability to choose what is wise and good. God of love, we believe and trust in you. We thank you again for David and Judith and everything they brought to us as a community. We pray for them as they go and know that you will bless the work of their hands where you have called them. Pray for ourselves as we seek together for the way forwards as your worshipping people in this place. Please guide us by your Holy Spirit to see your kingdom come here. God of love, we believe Amen. and trust in you. Amen. As Jesus himself taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We come in a few moments to share together in an agape, and we come with clean hands and open hearts. And so we say together, in our baptism, we turned away from wrong living, wrong words, wrong deeds. We renew that commitment today and ask for the Father's mercy and Jesus's grace to be poured afresh into our hearts as we choose to follow him anew. Amen. And in doing so, we are at peace with God and peace with one another. And so we're going to sing Peace be with you, using the words, listen to the words of the risen Christ. We're going to sing a song now to help us pray. And it has a recurring line that says, peace be with you. And we're going to do these actions. We're going to say, peace be with you. So let's try that again. Peace be with you.
That wasn't meant to happen. We'll go back. Once you have something in your mind, we're going to sing, Peace Be With Me. You ready? So we're going to now take that chance to share in bread and wine. And the way it's going to work in a moment is I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And you might want to have your bread and your wine or your drink with you close by. Um, and we get to the end of the prayers and then we will share that together. So we'll go to the screen so everybody can see each other. And we'll then do that together. And then having done that, we'll then just finish with a, another short prayer. So as Jesus revealed himself to two of his disciples, as he shared an evening meal with them in the breaking of bread. We say together, as we break, as we bread, break bread and drink, and drink together, together, so we ask Jesus, we ask Jesus to make himself, make himself known, known to us in our hands, hands and make himself, make himself known, known, known to others in there. There. We thank you, God, say for, together, our, for our daily bread. Daily bread. For the, for the food which delights and nourishes, and, nourishes us. and for the companionship that sustains us. 
and we thank we you, thank you to drink to quench our thirst and for the living the water, water with which you surprise and and transform our lives. Be present, be present, yes. Lord Jesus, as you were, as you were in the midst of your disciples. And make yourself, make yourself known, known to us as we as share, we share this food together. For you live, you live and reign with the Father the and the Holy Spirit, Spirit. One God, one God world, world without God. end. Amen. <coughs> so now if you go on to gallery view, you should be able to see everybody who's here. And just simply, as we take a few moments to break our bread or whatever we have, and then also to drink together. And so we begin just by breaking bread together. And also we share together in our drink. And then just take a few moments to look around the screen, the faces that you're very familiar with and thank God for them and pray for God's blessing in their homes, but also perhaps those who you're not so familiar with, where there's some people who are fairly new in the community on the screen as well, um, to just pray for them. If you lift, move your mouse around, you're probably able to see their name, or at least one of the names of the people who are there as well. Just take a few seconds just to thank God for each other and pray for each other. Thank you. And as we finish this part, so we sing together that God would be our vision and would guide us and lead us into the future. So our final hymn is Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. And I'll get there in a second.
know, finally we pray together for this place of Bardney and the villages which surround it. And so you may want to change where it says thank you for Bardney. You may want to just change it with the village that you live in if you're not living in Bardney at the moment. Father God, we thank you for the places we live and for calling us here. Transform our village into a place of hope, a welcoming open door into your kingdom. May your presence mark us out. May we serve you with joy. May we be your peace weavers, your gospel bringers, and your love bearers to all in the community here. Amen. And so finally, a prayer of blessing as we ask God to be with us in the coming days and weeks and months. And you may want to just receive God's blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into his doors. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and always. Amen. Thank you for being with us and we're finishing now. I'm going to in a minute close Facebook. Goodbye everybody on Facebook. Hope that you've enjoyed it and you'll be able to think I've put you on. Everybody should be able to see all the faces. So if you want to wave to everybody on Facebook and say goodbye to them. And then we'll do that. We'll come off.